Hey guys, welcome to the Nerd Find. This is Pradeep Chaudhary, and in this video, we'll be uh, creating our main Python file for our fast API. And like this would a video would be like very simple. Uh, it won't have any uh, like fancy, no blueprints, no versioning, uh, no database connection, no code operation. It would be a very simple uh, API with just a couple of routes, uh, maybe a get route, a post route, uh, and like uh, nothing too fancy. So it would be like very basic. So now let's go ahead and uh, let's start uh, from where we left. Uh, okay, uh, if you guys haven't checked uh, my last video on how to create um, your uh, environment with all the required dependencies for uh, your fast API, then do go uh, uh, look at that and uh, then come back to this video. I would be uh, putting the link in the description below. Okay, so uh, now let's go ahead and uh, let's create our uh, main.py. So uh, let's see uh, the directory structure. So we have a directory API and environment YAML file, which we use to uh, create all the um, like uh, the required uh, um, virtual environment with all the required dependencies. So um, apart from that, we had a readme.py which had few instructions. So now let's cd into the API directory and we'll create a main.py. So now let's go ahead and let's uh, start writing our main Python file, which would also have the routes for the fast API. So we'll go ahead and import few libraries that we would be needing. Of course, the OS library of Python, or uh, the JSON library to do some JSON operation. The request library I generally imported because it's needed in a lot of places. Uh, would be importing the logging uh, package, uh, would do some logging. So logging is something that's very uh, crucial uh, for an API or uh, any application for, uh, for say. So like, uh, you, uh, like if you uh, if you don't have a, lo a logging mechanism, you, if you don't push logs to a proper log warehouse, uh, you would eventually face a lot of difficulty in scaling up the application. Uh, like you would not be able to figure out wh what's going uh, wrong, why requests are failing so many times, and all this data. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so like it's very important to have a very mature logging mechanism. So in this um, video, we'll be logging to a file, but uh, in the future videos, we'll be seeing how to configure this logging uh, package to log to, uh, say, Elkinsters or Splunkinsters or a better log warehouse. So apart from the logging uh, uh, package, we'll be importing the fast API. Um, so we'll be importing the fast API class from the fast API um, library and sorry why did it change my name Jeez. okay now it works um okay so now now let's go ahead and configure our logging directory uh logging package to uh, uh the proper configuration uh, so in this video we would be logging it uh, to a file, but in the future videos, we're just seeing how to log it in a better way. So we would be uh, setting the log level to uh, a one level. So it depends on which environment you are uh, running your API or your application. And so if it's a dev environment, uh, you, you might want to set it in a trace or uh, one or uh, debug, uh, uh, debug kind of a level. If it's a production uh, deployment, uh, you might want to reduce the number of logs uh, to something like warning uh, issue or something like that. So apart from this, we'll uh, be initializing our uh, fast API object. So let me just add a comment. So it's always a good practice to add comments. Uh, make it more readable and uh, like it's just useful for your colleagues. So we'll be creating an object of uh, fast API. We'll be calling it app. And in this uh, fast API uh, um, class, it, uh, it, uh, it takes a couple of uh, um, default parameters. Uh, so we'll give the uh, title as fast API demo and the description is provided. So, so depending on what you're trying to do, uh, put something sensible in it. For now, I'll just put a demo in it. And apart from that, uh, we just specify the version of the API 
uh, we are currently operating on. So this versioning will be important when uh, like you create a blueprint or like you have multiple versions for the same API in those uh, modules. It would be helpful. So apart from this, uh, we'll use a couple of annotations. So we won't use it uh, uh, straight away in this video, but in the future videos, we'll definitely use this uh, a lot. So one of the annotation is app dot on underscore event. So these annotations are provided by fast API. So we would be using those. Uh, so one of the uh, uh, annotation that we are using here is on event startup. So when this API is uh, getting started, uh, what uh, functions or what uh, things this API needs to do first before starting up. So uh, we'd be defining, uh, so there's a path, of, a path operation, so we'd be defining it in a, a syntax function. So uh, just uh, we'd add a log statement with uh, log level as info here, uh, just uh, get some uh, log information. It's just uh, helpful in the future to deal with it now. So yeah, for now we just uh, do a pass operation, but in the future we'll uh, be using this a lot. So like what this is used for generally is like if you need to connect to a database, uh, uh, like for some operations you might want to connect it uh, when the application is starting and uh, might want to uh, like maintain the connection uh, for the entire life cycle. Uh, it's, it's generally not recommended to make data, uh, like database connections for each of the requests. It just, uh, it's just, creates a lot of uh, written connections for the database. So like uh, it would be helpful in those kind of scenarios, like for example, you need to load a pickle file uh, and store it as an object, or like you need to uh, create a Kafka consumer, so you would need to create the connection before starting the API. So like whatever you need to uh, do before starting the API, uh, we just need to uh, put it here. So uh, with the add log statement after the connect, then uh, similarly we'll do a app dot on event shutdown uh, so like similar to startup shutdown just specifies that uh, we need to uh, like uh, do all of this but uh, when the api is shutting down so uh, we'll name it in, uh, like we'll uh, uh, the path of uh, operation will name it shutdown and we'll just add a few uh, log statement uh, with the level info Okay, uh, yeah, so uh, as I'm using uh, single quotes uh, from the beginning, I would like to, uh, like I would prefer to maintain the consistency in my code by keeping the uh, quotes as uh, single quotes. So in Python, uh, single and double quotes mean the same, but it's generally preferred to uh, keep a level of consistency in your entire code base to make it more readable. So we'll just pause it for now and log dot info. Um, sorry, I shouldn't have called it before connect, before shutdown, it should be. And uh, after shutdown. So we have defined our uh, startup and shutdown events, and uh, we'll uh, be using it uh, in data, like in more details uh, in the later videos. So now let's go ahead and create our first talk. Okay, so before creating our first route, uh, let's see what are the types of methods, HTTP methods that are available to us in a RESTful API. So uh, in a broader sense, there are five uh, available uh, type of requests that you can make. So uh, get, post, put, patch, delete. Depending on what operation you want to do with that route, uh, you might uh, want to attach it to the correct request for. So uh, get is uh, something um, like if you don't have any sensible data to pass to the URL, uh, you're fine with the data being passed over the URL without any encoding with the user being able to see the uh, uh, parameters being passed. So uh, and like you just, uh, like you might uh, you might need to just query a database or read a file or something and return uh, the data. So in those scenarios, get is generally helpful. It's faster and like uh, less network. Uh, um, uh, network usage is done in terms of get request but yes uh, it's not that secure uh, so if you're using get request uh, uh, like give it a thought on what data you're passing to the user so now post request so post request is uh, something uh, uh, that's much more secure than get request uh, it, uh, it doesn't send, uh, send the data over the url the data is encoded uh, uh, like uh, making it difficult to uh, 
uh, like visualize the data or uh, understand the data uh, without doing any uh, special operations on it, then uh, like uh, what it is used for. So it's generally used for uh, like uh, when you want to uh, create a new a new user, retrieve uh, like uh, uh, insert some rows into uh, the database or something like that. It's generally used in, in those scenarios. Put and patch now. So put is um, put and patch are actually very similar. Put is if you want to uh, replace the entire resource of a collection, uh, then uh, we generally use put. Patches uh, if we just want to uh, like patch one particular uh, part of the resource or one particular key of the resource, we use patch. So like uh, an, a very simple example. Suppose say you have a, a table in our process database. And you want to uh, replace a com uh, complete row uh, with different values. So you would uh, go with put in, uh, in that scenario. So now uh, in the same table, you want to replace one particular cell. Uh, that means uh, one particular uh, column for a particular row. You want to replace the value there. You would go for patch. And now delete, uh, as, like, uh, uh, like as evident from the name itself, we use it and we want to replace something now like scenarios we use so now uh, that we know a little better about like what kind of methods are available to us uh, so let's go ahead and we'll create a get method so get is uh, like the simplest one to create and like uh, the data is passed uh, over uh, over our uh, url as we discussed so now how to create a get method so uh, we'll use again use uh, the fast API annotation and we'll uh, be Calling the at the rate app uh, object uh, at the rate app annotation with get and we'll be specifying the route here. So we'll uh, name it get route and as well we'll add a tag to this route. So generally tags are useful when uh, you have uh, multiple routes in your API. Tags are useful in uh, like um, sort of like um, kind of uh, maintaining a level of structure to it. Uh, so, uh, like, we'll give the tag as demo here. So now uh, we'll uh, create the path that, uh, operation that will be attached to this get method. So we'll be uh, again, um, uh, like, uh, um, all the uh, path operation that we define in fast API async uh, methods. So we'll be uh, uh, defining it as a async method here as well. So uh, we'll be creating a route. Or say get status or something like that. So this is a double out. That's all. So we'll be taking one parameter, say name, and uh, we are supposed to take it as a string. So if we specify in this way, uh, so the fast API would do the validation that the name that is being sent is a string, and uh, if it's not, it would throw uh, like it won't uh, uh, like it won't do the rest of the operation. It would throw a rest string. So this uh, in the um, in this video we'll be taking uh, normal data types, uh, primitive data types uh, as input from the user, and then uh, uh, like coming videos we'll see how to uh, take it using a pydantic based model. That's much more convenient and much more uh, like useful in uh, larger applications. So we'll just take one parameter here uh, that's name. We'll add a info uh, statement here. Uh, so like demo route. One name uh, will pass in the parameter here, the format, and name here. Then uh, we'll just return something. We'll just add a comment to a bunch of things. Then uh, we'll just return some data matches. Return message and return yes and say we return the name as well. So return the inputs. Yes. Now it's uh, so we have created our first route. So now let's see how we can run this route. So uh, fast API uh, by default uh, will expose a, a swagger UI for you. So it uh, uses the open API. Uh, uh, and it's back and so you would get a, a swagger UI by default so we'll be using the swagger UI to test our routes 
So now let's see how to run our application. So first I will uh, add it to my readme.md. Uh, so uh, I will be running the application. And uh, in this running the application, uh, we'll spread the command here. So basically we'll be using UVCon as our WHGI server. So we'll run it using UVCon and uh, our, our main directory is app. Uh, sorry, our main directory is API, and inside the API, we'll run main app, and we'll uh, run it with reload parameter on port 8000. There are multi multiple other parameters that you can use as well, uh, as well with UVCon, like number of workers, and like memory, and all those things you can specify. Uh, in the development environment, we'll just run it with reload. So now let's go ahead and let's run this particular API. So now if you see this, uh, um, we'll go back to the app directory, uh, which has the visibility to the API directory and which will run the main app here from here. So as you can see, I've already activated the environment. So if you haven't seen my previous video, to go ahead, to go ahead see that uh, on how to create a virtual environment with all the required dependencies. So now let's go ahead and run, uh, let's run our Unicorn command. So I think I copied it. You can see it here and copy it. And control shift, something is wrong with this freaking thing. Okay. For some reason it's wrong to copy it. Okay. Let me just type it again. Okay. Okay, we'll create a new terminal here. Uh, we'll cd into the directory of uh, our CBI. Then we'll go into the app directory. We'll activate the environment. Our CBI demo. Then we'll paste my command. Yeah, now it works. So now we can see our application startup is complete. So now uh, it says it exposed the API on this particular route. So it's a local host route. So let's copy our uh, route and go to open it in our browser. So to access this Swagger UI, what we can, uh, like to access the Swagger UI, what we need to do is we just need to append slash docs to, uh, to the URL that we have. And we can, we'll be able to see the Swagger UI. So as we can see, we have the title, we have the version, we have, uh, the tag and they have all those things. So now let's see. Uh, uh, we'll try this uh, route. Uh, so we need to, uh, as we had specified, uh, we needed one parameter from the user that is the name parameter. Uh, our Swagger UI is asking us to put that parameter and it says you need to provide it as a string and this specific parameter. So we'll just uh, give the name as the null bang here. Nothing too fancy. And we can see we got our response that we expected and with this data score of 200. In the future videos, we'll see how to send custom uh, uh, response code depending on uh, how your uh, request is being handled. So now uh, uh, we know our API is working. So let's go ahead and uh, let's see um, if we can directly use it without you know, the Swagger UI. So here, we can uh, like we are uh, directly passing the parameter name uh, over the URL and it works perfectly fine. So uh, as we uh, discussed in the uh, types of uh, requests that we had, uh, this was one of the uh, uh, feature of the get uh, get route. So we can access it directly from the browser uh, as well. So uh, this was uh, get request. We'll be going into much more details of get request uh, in the um, like uh, future videos. We'll be uh, using it. Paid, make, uh, make a lot so we'll uh, go into much more details about that so now let's go ahead and we'll create the post route uh, for our API so now we'll just copy the entire thing we'll uh, replace whatever it's required or maybe better I can write it again so uh, we'll use the app annotation with post and uh, we'll name this route post route and again, we'll uh, attach it with tags as uh, demo. You can attach one particular route with multiple uh, tags as well. That's, uh, so we'll call it post 
uh, status and again we'll take a parameter here the same parameter str uh, and string format will do a lot of uh, what uh, demo for push request uh, for the name and let's provide the name here then uh, uh, add a comment uh, then we return something I would return the exact same so we'd be adding uh, in terms of more functionality so this is a very basic video uh, like uh, just to show how uh, like how you can create roles so we'll just pass the name parameter as well so now let's see our terminal so now we can see that uh like it automatically took the changes and uh you can see the application startup uh, already complete so if we refresh this we can see the post out here and we'll go ahead and we'll try it out this one so here again quick pass the name and we can see it's working as well and we get a 200 uh, status code so now uh let's see uh so if we are able to do the same thing with post method as well uh, like uh, going to a browser and directly using it on a browser uh, like by requesting it on the browser uh, itself so if we try to do that with a post request we'll be getting an error that this method is not allowed so uh, if you see the terminal it uh, it would also say the same thing it says 405 uh, method not at all so post method uh like you cannot pass the parameter using the url you have to pass it through the body or uh, uh, to the so this is pretty much uh everything about uh get and um uh, like i'm sorry i shouldn't say everything so this is the start of uh the fast api that tons of other things to do uh, like the returns of other um, other toolings around it so we'll be going uh, through each of those so yeah stay tuned subscribe share it with your colleagues thank you bye, -bye. have a nice day